All right, good morning. Today we're looking at my new super heavy cargo hauler. This is what I call Large Marge for uh, obvious reasons. Uh, she's a big girl. This is a, a ship that has 9,000 uh, base cargo capacity. I think it's 9,050. And the only reason I was able to push it up that high is because I finally got around to doing that all that money can buy quest that Stroud gives you. And if you do that, uh, it's a stealth quest mission. If you go through there and don't kill anybody, then you can get uh, access to these SAL 6830 engines. And they're really nice because they're only two power. They have the highest thrust and the highest uh, maneuvering thrust. And you can have six of them. So they're uh, they're the best engines that you can get with uh, in the game currently. So uh, I went ahead and put this together. Uh, broke my new uh, record. I think my previous record was 8,500 cargo, and I've now managed to get it over 9,000. Uh, I did make a few compromises. As you can see, I'm using a Class B shield instead of the Class uh, C shield, because this is a Class C ship. And uh, when I get down into the uh, ship builder, I'll show you why I did that. But uh, other than that, I think it's a good ship. It's got uh, room for five, or no, excuse me, six two-by-one halves and uh, 9,050 cargo and it still maintains 100 mobility so I'm really happy with this I've been at this all night trying to try different configurations of cargo and I had a problem with the fuel I kept running out of gas uh, I didn't have enough room to put uh, enough fuel that I wanted on there but I uh, kept plugging away at it and I uh, finally okay, figured no out problem. how to do this <clears throat> so you can see uh, she's a big ship with the uh, base with my uh, I don't have uh, this, when you're on the ground, it doesn't give you the Samco buff, but it does give you your uh, astrodynamics skill. So I've got 50% increased cargo, and that's uh, showing as 14,253. Once we get in the space, it'll be like 15,600, because the buff that Samco gives you will apply. But uh, 9,050 cargo. And I don't want to sound egotistical, but I think that's the best that I've ever seen by far posted online uh, and still maintain 100 mobility. 10 crew members, uh, 30 year or 30 light year jump range, and 130 top speed range or, uh, or speed. You can see I did the uh, Vanguard, Vanguard Bulwark Shield Generator, and I did that because if you go to Shields, if you look at the uh, the top end. Class C shield generator. It's 1600 max shield, and this one's 1450. So they're almost pretty close to each other. But the difference in weight, look at that, that's 70 mass. This is 160 mass. So it's less than half the mass. This bulwark shield generator is less than half the mass of this one. And that makes it, that made a huge difference. I wouldn't have been able to make the ship. Like, I wouldn't have been able to get a 9,000 car rating by using that Class C shield generator. It's just too heavy. <coughs> But these are the engines you get from doing the uh, Stroud quest line. All the money can buy. And uh, they have a huge amount of thrust. And uh, maneuvering thrust is really high as well. And they, the best part, though, is they only require two power, which means you can have six of them. So that's really nice. And, but these engines are absolutely massive. They're just they're huge. It's like a third of the entire ship is just the engines. And uh, as far as weapons, I had to use all Class A weapons. To reduce weight so I can stick everything like every there's no trim pieces or uh, well that's a lie there's a uh, I put it port I had one two or excuse me I had two tons left of mass to play with and uh, so I just added this porthole here on the uh, all in berth so but other than that there's no uh, extraneous pieces here everything was going into the cargo because it was just a personal uh, challenge for myself to see how high I could push the cargo. I really didn't think I could get it up over 9,000, but here we are. It worked. So uh, I'll get in the ship builder, I'll take it apart, and uh, I'll show you how it's built, and we'll take it into combat, see how it performs. And even though it's, these are all Class A weapons, I think I used the Vanguard shield or, uh, Vanguard Obliterators. Those are the best weapons I still, I think, in the game still, even though they're Class A. And it's for the same reason, because they're only two power, you can have six of them. And then I used the PBO 50 auto proton beams, and then on the other side I put the PBO 40 auto electron beams. So I had to keep them everything at low weight, 
But he, as you see, when we get into combat, it's not going to make any difference. They're, they still just blow everything away. All right, let me take this thing apart, and hopefully I can remember how to put it together, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, here we are in the ship builder. I've got everything pulled apart. Uh, we're going to start with the ship bed 200 landing bay. We're going to connect that to a Deimos control station 2x1. For our gears, we're going to be using these NG20s from Nova Galactic. Uh, these are the most powerful thrust or, uh, gears in the game. We're going to be using them in their wide variation. And as you can see, they have four, just the regular, and then the wide. We're going to be using the wide with the two gears sticking out the bottom. We're going to need six of them because this is a heavy girl. Stick them on just like this. Fuser DC402 reactor. The uh, grab drive won't hook up yet because there's no attach point on the bottom. For our cargo, our base level cargo, we're going to be using a Galleon S203 cargo hold and we're going to be using four of them. And uh, as you can see, they're going to be like on the bottom with the, they're kind of like inside out. I have the, this is usually the inside. I'm going to have it facing outward with the sloped edge like as like I'm showing you right here. All right. And then we'll put our Apollo GV200 grab drive right there. All right, our demos control station is going to stick out. Like this. Yeah, I'm already forgetting how to put this stupid thing together. Uh, I did this wrong. These uh, sloped edges need to, you need the attach point facing outwards. So we're going to have it just like that. And just like that. There we go. So it's it should look just like that. And that's the base level of the of the ship level one or deck one. Fuel was a problem. That was really the biggest problem I had in the beginning because when I do these builds, I always try to have enough fuel to jump from Aridani to uh, I can't remember the name of the system on the other side, but it's the farthest jump that you can make. And uh, I calculated this one at 375 fuel that I needed. To make that jump with this ship and that's without Sarah on board because I don't use her when I do my fuel calculations but I do have the astrodynamics uh, skill which reduces the fuel requirement needed by 50% and I do use that in my calculations so without it you would need something like I don't know, like 600 and something fuel but I have that skill so I can get by with 300 and 75 and this tank is gives me 400 and we're going to hide it down here in this little cavity right here. On the front <coughs> of these, uh, excuse me, on the front of these uh, cargo, uh, 203 cargo holds, we're going to be using two of these 20T hauler cargo holds, and they're going to snap on just like this. I'm already forgetting how to put this thing together. All right, and then uh, on top of this, we're going to use a Deimos all-in-one berth. It's going to go just like that. Hang on a second. All right, I'm back. Sorry, I made a mistake. We had to start over again. I forgot how to build my own ship. So you can see I started with the six NG-20 landing gears. And the ship bed 200, and I'm using this Deimos control station 2x1 in the middle to connect it all. We're going to use these four Galleon S203 cargo holds. We're going to connect one there, another one on top of it, one here, and one there. And we're going to use two of these 20T cargo hold haulers. We're going to stick them right here on top of the front gears. 
Where's the other one at? Oh, here it is. Then we're going to use a Deimos control station 2 by one And we're going to... It's not going to go directly on top of this one. It's going to be offset by one, just like that. That way, when we bring our... Well, I can't do it yet, but when we bring our uh, cockpit in, we'll, you'll see how it connects. A Deimos all-in-one 2 by one berth. And that's going to connect like this. Now we can connect our Cabot C4 bridge from Nova Galactic. Well, you know what? Before I do this, well, we'll do it this way. We use a Fuser DC402 reactor. Hooks up right here on top of this uh, back section. And then the grab drive, the Apollo GV200 will go right there. Let me move this uh, Damos all-in-one berth out of the way. This little cavity right here, that's where we're going to put our fuel tank. It's an H30 Atlas HE3 tank. It's going to go right there. We're going to leave the other side just empty. Put the Damos all-in-one berth back on top. You know, I'm going to change this. It doesn't matter, but I'm going to put the all-in-one berth sticking up in the control right here. That way, I know it sounds stupid, but when you're, uh, like, if you're sleeping in the all-in-one berth in the bunks, I like to just be nice to have the porthole there so you can just look out. All right, so the ship's starting to take form. On the top, we're going to use a Deimos mess hall, 2 by 3 And on the back, we're going to connect our engines. Like I said, these SCL 6830s are uh, super powerful. Uh, 18,000 engine thrust and 8,800 8, maneuvering thrust. We're going to use all six of them. They snap just on like that. On the bottom, we're going to use a slim DP, 100 DP docker. Just stick it right there. Now for cargo, I uh, was trying to use the ones you get from the uh, the Alliance side, uh, but these are the ones you get from the Free Star Collective. These the Gamma ones, and they ended up being a little more efficient, or at least it worked out better with the amount of space I had left. So we'll stick. We have six of them total. All right. Uh, excuse me. There's eight total. One, two, three, four. Yeah, eight and one. They're all 1020 cargo holds, except for two of them. Two of them are 10 by or 1010 cargo holds. And then our shield is the Vanguard Bulwark. We're just going to snap it up on top. And then it's just a matter of hooking up our weapons. And I use four, of, or excuse me, three of these PBO 30, excuse me, PBO, three of these PBO 40 auto electron beams, six of the Vanguard Obliterator auto projectors, and three of the PBO 50 auto proton beams. We're just going to use this bottom row here. Or you can stick them on top, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> so, this is the ship. It's kind of uh, chonky looking, but when you have this much cargo, and especially look at the size of this thing 20 meter or 40 meters length by 37 meters width. The ship is only half the length of the maximum that's allowed, and yet it carries more cargo than any other ship that I've ever seen, by far, online. Uh, as far as the hab space, you know, it's, it sticks out like that, and then like that. So it looks kind of weird like this. This is the hab space you have to play with, but it does have a nice... Uh, benefit to having it uh, strewn out like this is uh, all, I think all of the gears or excuse me all of the uh, uh, ladders just go straight up or at least they did last time I tried it probably screw me now 
But uh, I think I have one more ton to play with if I, uh, let's try to add a uh, weapon mount. So yeah, 42.75 is the hard limit. Anything over that, mobility goes to 99. So I had one ton left to play with. I guess two if I got rid of this structural piece here. I don't know, what do you think? I generally don't like to waste pieces like that, but yeah, whatever. I don't like that you can't change the color of these things either. They don't do anything. Yeah, well, we get outside, take a look at it. I'll go inside, give you a little tour. It's four layers deep, which is uh, one of the bigger ships that I've ever made. Now, you know, I could have tried to stretch it out a little bit. Anything I can help you with? You know, okay, to give myself no more problem. space to play with, but keep in mind, anytime you, uh, like, if you wanted to make this, like, this long, well, all the stuff that you fill in here is going to just take up more mass, so the longer you make the ship, the more that's that's coming out of the the cargo hold. So, and I, this is, for me, this was just, I wanted to get the cargo over 9,000, and still, the ship has to still be usable. I'm not going to do any kind of gimmick builds or glitch builds or anything like that. But uh, we'll go inside and take a look at it. Alright, here is the first control station. Gives you four crew members. If you look up, we can see all the way to the top of the ship, which is good. So we just have a single ladder. Ah, oh, weird. I was just thinking. Yeah, whatever. Well, oh shit. Never mind. There's a bathroom there. Hey. There's four bunks. Hello again. Little we'll stove, sink. Sure. This is uh, why I wanted to put the uh, all-in-one hab right here, is so we could have the porthole where you can just look out when you're relaxing here. We go up to the top level, and this is the second control station, which adds another four p uh, pl uh, crew member slots. This is the cockpit. We'll get into orbit, take a look at some of the stats, and then take it into combat. We're clear. If I sound a little goofy, I'm sorry. I think I've been up for about 24 hours now. Orbital insertion done. Oops. If you look at the ship stats now, now that we're in space, Samco's uh, buff will kick in, and uh, that shows us to have this ship now has 15,679 which, as I said before, is by far the most I've ever seen on a ship that still has 100 mobility. The shields, if we had the maximum, uh, the class, the most powerful Class C shield generator, would, st would be 2880, and we're at 2610, so it's still almost maxed out. There, you know, now that I've, uh, somebody online suggested this, and uh, it was a really good idea, I don't really think, if you're trying to build as efficiently as possible, this or the there's another shield that's uh that's 1500 that weighs 20 tons more than this it's uh a little bit better but this is a really good uh, bang for your buck shield generator right here the only thing I don't like about it is it's stuck black you can't paint it but whatever to dance among the stars. all right we're gonna go over to uh actually you know what before we do that I'll show you how I do my fuel calculations. I always jump down here to Aridani. Donnie. 
So this is the farthest system to the side of the uh, settled systems that you could get. Now if we want to jump, the farthest jump that I've been able to figure is this one right here to bore. And it says I need 374.4, so 375 fuel in order to make that in a single jump. I think that's like 330 or no oh, three. Yeah, so this is this Hugens is almost the same, but it's a little bit less. But this uh, 374 is the highest jump that I've been able to find in the game, and uh, so that's what I do when I build these ships. I uh, come out there to Aridani, write this down, and then try to build the ship around how much fuel I need, and try to you know fit, uh, fit that in. A few times I've kind of cheated. To where you don't, you can't quite make it. Maybe this system right here and this planet right here are out of range if you were at Eridani. But how often do you go to Eridani and then he jump all the way to this system? It's pretty rare. And even if you did, you could just do it in two jumps, so it's not a big deal. But we're gonna go to uh, Serpentis and uh, play around with some uh, Varun guys. Gonna hit that rock. Malam. Oh shit. Uh, well, I guess we're jumping. Ooh, I love the feeling after a perfect jump. Somebody was asking me why I always put two points in grab drive instead of throwing them into the weapons when I'm doing this. It's because I have OCD and I want all my weapons to have the same energy. I don't know why. It's some. It's stupid, but it's just the way I do it. So whatever's left over after balancing out the weapons, I put it into the grab drive. Come out, come out. Okay. I was out here a little while ago, so maybe I didn't give enough time for it to reset. ship does not accelerate fast. I think it's, it's just heavy. You shall be judged. We must and the grab drive is fried. Grab drive on a commission. Ah. They've got no shields. Go get them. So you can see combat's pretty trivial. I have all the uh, the skills for uh, space combat. The only thing I didn't pick up was the EM weapons and I don't really think that's worth it. I'm not gonna get this stuff. I noticed uh, as uh, one of my like level 192 now. Yeah, it's getting like takes longer and longer to level. Like it's definitely a experience curve going on. Let's try this planet or the moon. So I get 200 speed out of these engines. Uh, that's with my astrodynamics or whatever skill that increases the speed. Target shield direct. Well, that was lame. Let's try. Uh, <clears throat> let's try this planet. Serpentis six. a nice profile shot right there. I think it's a, uh, like I said, it's a, it's a large ship, but uh, you know, it, it follows the same design philosophy as all my ships, really, because this is just the most efficient uh, shape that you can. Uh, you don't have to use any kind of uh, extraneous pieces, because every uh, mass, like even that. Uh, It's lock on. <laughs> it 
this shit. I screwed us up bad. Alright. These guys have pretty good shields, by the way. They're really strong. So I took a little bit of damage there, but uh, it's no biggie. Which, uh, oops. I used to know how to do this. Go to inventory, go to cargo hold, go to aid. I got 38 ship parts, so I'm good. Uh, I'll get one more. Uh, we already went there. <coughs> yeah, these little flying squares is basically what it is. It's the most efficient design that I've been able to come up with. You know, if you start putting radiators and wings and tails and portholes and braking thrusters and all that stuff, you know, all that's got to come out of some, all that mass has to come out of somewhere. Now, if you don't care about your mobility, then go for it. But, uh, you know, you don't want to be stuck in this thing with low mobility and a bunch of ships just, you know, dancing around and shooting the shit out of you. This is annoying. I played with this for several hours trying to get the cargo, different cargo configurations, trying to get it over 9,000. Uh, at one point I did have it up to 9,070, but that was before I had the uh, bigger fuel tank. So I still had the fuel problem. And uh, I didn't like that, so I went back and kept plugging away at it and uh, got a hold of that new idea with the other uh, fuel tank. Which uh, was a little bit heavier, so that's why I had to take a little bit out of the cargo. But uh, we're at 9,050, so it's still perfectly uh, acceptable. Oh, did that get five? Whatever. You see, the acceleration on this thing is uh, pretty low. <laughs> but that's okay. I got like 9,000 credits on that one. Went ahead. Well, you know what? Let's look at it in the uh, ship mode. Get pointed into the sun when I do that. So, uh, I'm tired. I've been at this all day. So, this is the ship. I guess with the uh, four layers which is fine because these engines are four layers deep so it, it, it balances out you know it doesn't look kind of goofy at least I don't think it does but uh, bottom it's just that single hab in the gears small ships are my thing. I don't like the super large designs, at least not until they come up with a way to uh, uh, change the gear or the, the ladders or the doors inside. Because I mean it gets ridiculous sometimes. I've had them where uh, you got a ladder going up in the one hab, then a ladder going down in the same hab, then you got to take a door to the right to go up the ladder to the next level. It's, it's just utterly ridiculous how they did that. Which I'm a little surprised they even launched the game with that in there, like that. Uh, but like I said, these engines, the SAL 6830s, are the best engines for uh, cargo. And uh, damn, we haven't seen that ship in a while. I'm gonna go into the ship builder real quick. I want to show you uh, if you don't have those uh, SAL 6830s, the Poseidon. I think it's DT 230s are the next best thing. What can I do for you? We're asking everyone. Sure, how about it? So if you don't have the uh, these these engines, <coughs> then uh, you can't do this build with the Poseidon's engines. Your your uh, thrust would just be or the maneuvering would just be super low. So uh, that's my Class B ship. That's a uh, specialized fighter. I was trying to make see how small I could get it. Uh, 
there's a class A. I reconfigured this one because it used to have like 4,000 cargo, but the jump range was stuck at 26. And uh, everybody was complaining online that uh, they, you know, you got to have 30 or whatever. So I was, or 29. It, it, the, the most that you ever need in the game is 29. Uh, I redid this to have it with 2,200 cargo, and uh, that got my jump range up to 30 light year jump range. So, but what I wanted to show you was this Capybara build. If you don't have those DT uh, 6830s, uh, or SAL 6830s, these Poseidon DT 230s are the best engines probably that you can use. And uh, even with those engines, I was still able to get the cargo up to 6,710. And I still have. Nope, it's the other way. One, two, three, four, five cargo halves that I was able to squeeze in there. Uh, when I think about it, this was actually the first ship that I ever built that I posted online. And uh, it got a lot of uh, like positive comments and everything. So th this is actually the ship that spurred me into doing these things online in the first place. But when I did that ship earlier, <coughs> excuse me, that uh, original ship, it only had 6,000 cargo. And it only had three habs to play with on top. So, and the ship is exactly the same dimensions as it was before. So it's just a matter of, uh, as I've gone through the game and I've figured out some little tricks, some little ideas on how to save weight, you know, you just got to keep plugging away with it, trying different cargo configurations, different uh, things in the ship to uh, maximize your efficiency, then... Uh, that's what I'm saying. I mean, getting another 700 cargo and increasing the hab space out of the same dimensions is, you know, when I think back, I thought that the ship that I built before, you know, the 6,000 cargo ship was the absolute best that could be, ever be made. And uh, that just wasn't true, obviously. So when I say that this ship is probably uh, the best uh, the, or the most cargo that you could ever put into a uh, ship, that's probably not true either, but at this point you're getting into diminishing returns. It's like maybe you could squeeze out another 20 cargo, but it gets you're really going to have to start pulling mass out of other uh, items. You know, there might be a configuration like I don't use Excel's spreadsheets and all that to see what the most efficient, uh, <clears throat> you know, the most efficient setups and everything are. I just get in there, start trying different things, trying different configurations and uh, go on from there and this is what I came up with so I'm happy with it I hope you guys are happy with it and uh, with that good night I'm going to bed later